So it's been over three years since the two deadly Boeing Max accidents, and if you're like me, and I know many of you are, I'm sure you were left disappointed when after all the criminal investigations and trials had ended, that no one at Boeing associated with the Max program was punished or served any prison time. But what if I told you that after all these years, maybe we've been overlooking the real face of this whole Max mess, and the true entity responsible for the downfall of Boeing wasn't Boeing at all, but it was actually Southwest Airlines. Oh, I can hear you all around the world right now saying, Maximus, you Boeing-hating jackwagon. You've gone too far this time. You've officially lost your bloody mind. And maybe you're right. Or maybe after you listen to the facts, you may change your mind too. Is Southwest Airlines the real villain in the final chapter of the Boeing Max saga? I'm gonna tell you about it next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. It's amazing to me that over the years, after having spent hundreds of hours poring over Boeing emails and text messages, I can't believe I never connected the dots to Southwest Airlines before this story broke, because those Southwest Airlines dots were staring me in the face the whole time. The Wall Street Journal broke the story that Southwest Airlines played a much larger behind-the-scenes role in the development of the Boeing MAX and MAX pilot training than was previously known publicly. The revelation came to light in a legal filing in an appeals court proceeding in late March from a class action lawsuit filed in 2019 on behalf of plaintiffs who claimed Southwest Airlines colluded with Boeing in an alleged scheme to defraud ticket buyers with artificially inflated prices. And that in and of itself is a story for another day. But it was in April of 2016, when the MAX was still in early flight testing a year before its FAA certification, when Southwest Airlines made a bizarre request of Boeing. A request that looks as if it was a scheme to deceive the FAA. Southwest manager Bill Lusk asked Boeing officials, including the MAX chief technical pilot Mark Forkner, if engineers could install RCAS, a new flight control safety alert required for the MAX, on just a single one of Southwest's older 737s. However, there was a devious catch. They wanted Boeing to deactivate the new RCAS safety alert once the MAX was certified by the FAA. That's a strange request, right? Well, the sole purpose of this proposal was so that Southwest could be able to tell the FAA that the RCAS alert was not a new feature on the MAX, so that way it wouldn't trigger the FAA to implement costly additional pilot training that Southwest was desperately determined to avoid throughout the entire certification of the new MAX jet. But in the court filings that revealed this information, nothing new that we already didn't know was revealed about Boeing's involvement. However, what was new, and quite shocking, are the revelations about Southwest, Boeing's launch customer for the MAX. In 2011, on the heels of being blindsided by Airbus's announcement of their development of the revolutionary new A320neo, Boeing was forced to scrap their plans for their new mid-size 737 replacement, and instead they quickly cobbled together what we now know today as the MAX. On December 13, 2011, Boeing announced Southwest Airlines would be the launch customer of their new Frankenstein project, the 737 MAX. And boy, was it a big order. As a matter of fact, it was the largest firm order in Boeing's history. 150 MAX jets and 58 NGs. But as the MAX launched customer, Southwest carried a lot of juice. So Southwest was heavily involved in the MAX's development, since they would be among the first to fly the new aircraft. The court documents reveal that Southwest pressured Boeing intensely to ensure that its pilots as well as pilots at other airlines would be required to do only minimal training to cross over from the NG to the MAX. Not only did Southwest management not want their NG pilots to have to train in a flight simulator for the new MAX, but they also insisted to Boeing that even classroom training be taken off the table. Southwest also insisted on a clause in the sales contract, stipulating a penalty of $1 million per airplane delivered if that standard wasn't met. The filing also revealed that as the MAX's most influential customer, 
Southwest's involvement in the program infected every aspect from birth and development to the certification of the new 737 model. The legal filing quotes a Boeing program directive that instructs Boeing's training department to collaborate with Southwest on the required pilot training. And who was the liaison that Boeing put in charge to work with Southwest? That's right. Chief Technical Pilot, the Jedi Mind Tricker himself, Mark Forkner. And in the end, Southwest got its way, and its 737NG pilots were able to upgrade to fly the MAX after completing a three-hour course, but not in a simulator or even in the classroom, but on an iPad. So basically, while dropping the kids off at the pool, they could train themselves to be certified to cross over to the new MAX. Cool, huh? The filing also alleges that Southwest's involvement included pressuring Boeing to remove from pilot training manuals any mention of the new flight control software called the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS, which was later identified as the primary cause of the two crashes. Then in November of 2015, Southwest conducted an intensive review of the MAXIS systems, pilot procedures, and flight manuals, and came across mention of MCAS in a pilot checklist for an emergency procedure. So that's when Southwest contacted Boeing and demanded they remove any mention of MCAS from the checklist, and Boeing complied. Oh, and coincidentally, when Mark Forkner left Boeing in early 2018, Southwest hired him on the recommendation of Boeing executives whom they had dealt with on the MAX team. After the first line Air MAX went down in November of 2018, Southwest COO Mike Vandeven and other executives fought hard against the grounding of the MAX. Instead, Vandeven ordered that the airline simply follow the Boeing instruction, which was a bulletin telling pilots how they should handle a similar emergency on the MAX. Instructions that would prove entirely inadequate and fatal just over four months later with the second downing in Ethiopia. The filing also notes how top Southwest executives worked closely with Boeing's leaders to deflect press attention and convince journalists there was no safety issue with the MAX. After a request from Boeing following the first MAX accident, Southwest Chief Pilot Bob Waltz spoke with the journalists from the Wall Street Journal who were preparing a story, but he urged them to, quote, back off their sharpest angle. In other words, he wanted the reporters to downplay any danger related to the new plane or that Boeing's design had anything to do with the crash. The legal filing also detailed how he told them their hypothetical scenario of what happened on the Lion Air flight was off base and showed a lack of understanding of the systems involved. But then the very next day, Southwest COO Mike Vanderven told Boeing's then CEO of commercial airplanes Kevin McAllister in a text message that his team at Southwest had been quote good wingmen for Boeing. Think about that. The boss of Southwest was proud to help Boeing cover up the truth about the MAX in a continuing effort to save Southwest's bottom line. The new cockpit alert system that triggered Southwest's covert scheme to install it on only one single 737NG and then deactivate it once the MAX was certified is called RCAS, the Roll Command Alerting System. It was developed in response to several past accidents, including the fatal Aeroflot Nord Flight 821 in Russia in 2008. RCAS is an audible alert in which a computer-generated voice tells the pilot to roll right or roll left whenever necessary. RCAS was installed on the MAX as a direct result of Boeing's decision that it needed RCAS for the new unrelated MCAS system. Once MCAS changed the 737 original flight control computer software, the FAA would require additional upgrades to meet the latest safety standards, one of which mandated that the autopilot not cause confusion in the cockpit. At that point, RCAS then became a certification requirement on the MAX. It was then that Boeing suggested to Southwest that it be offered as a retrofit on all their 737 NGs, concluding that it would make the legacy aircraft much safer. But Southwest balked at this plan, refusing to put RCAS on its fleet of NGs because of the potential for the extra training time and expense needed. It was later that Southwest came up with their plan of installing it on only one single jet, then deactivating it after the MAX was certified. But in the end, Boeing offered RCAS as an option at no cost to all 737NG operators around the world. Contrary to the worries of managers at Southwest, 
It didn't trigger any different level of pilot training, nor did it cost anything. Former U.S. Department of Transportation Inspector General and advocate for airline safety, Mary Schiavo, said, It's hard to come up with any reason for Southwest's request other than to deceive the FAA. It's really appalling, she said. And Schiavo added that Southwest action should trigger an investigation into whether there were false statements made to the government, which could be criminal. Okay, so now with the benefit of this shocking new information, if we go back and look at the emails and text messages obtained by the U.S. government after the U.S. Congress subpoenaed millions of documents from Boeing, suddenly it all comes into focus now. And while it takes no blame away from Boeing for participating in implementing Southwest's orders, it does show who was really pulling the strings all along that led to the loss of 346 lives. And that was Southwest Airlines. Okay, so let's take a look at this first email dated June 12, 2015. Like I said, the first time I read this two years ago, I thought it was Boeing arbitrarily making these decisions. But now it all makes sense. Boeing's back was against the wall because Airbus's new Neo was going to eat their lunch unless they could get this new Max jet off the ground. And that would have never happened without Southwest's record-setting launch order. So if Boeing wanted to keep pace with Airbus, Boeing was going to have to do whatever Southwest wanted them to do. So here, down below, we see an unidentified business development manager emailing Mark Forkner. He asks, So CBT, computer-based training, is planned for 2016 for NG pilots who will be flying the MAX when they are delivered in 2017. But of course, now after the fact, we know this was the attempt not to alert the FAA that there are any training differences between the NG and the MAX. And we also now know that this was the request of Southwest Airlines, not Boeing. Then in the second paragraph, he questions, Why are we only going to put our cast on one single NG plane and not the entire fleet of planes before they take their first new MAX with our cast? And this manager was right to question this ridiculous request. But then Mark Forkner replies, Correct. The training is the important thing, and that our cast is on only one of their NGs. There, of course, being Southwest Airlines. So this establishes that there isn't a difference between the NG and the MAX. Then at the end he says, I know it sounds hokey, but that's the game we have to play with the FAA. Translation. Southwest wants to have our cast on only one of their NGs. So if the FAA would question them about it, they could take them to the plane and say, see, it was already on one NG, so it's not new. Thus, we don't need any new expensive training on the new MAX. And then this email, dated March 28, 2017. Forkner tells his team and customers that there will never be any simulator training required for the MAX and that Boeing will not allow that. But now we know this wasn't originally a Boeing directive, but it was Southwest telling Boeing, if you require simulator training after we told you we don't want it, you will have to pay us $1 million per plane. And Boeing couldn't afford that. Like I said, now the picture has become much more clear as to what was going on at Boeing at the time. And I want to wrap it up with this following email and text message. June 5th, 2017, 6.57 p.m. Here we see Mark Forkner who is acting on orders from Southwest Airlines messaging a colleague. He says now friggin' Lion Air. In the original email it was redacted but now we know it was Lion Air. But he says now friggin' Lion Air might need a sim to fly the MAX. And it may be because of their own stupidity. I'm scrambling to figure out how to unscrew this now. He punctuates that with the word idiots. And then there's this email on the same day at 8.02 p.m. Just two hours later, he emails another colleague. I'm putting out fires with the Lion Air who suddenly thinks they need simulator training to fly the Max. Sadly, as we all know, just 17 months later, Lion Air was the first Max to crash, taking all lives on board. So now suddenly this is all starting to make sense. Boeing had their backs against the wall because Airbus was going to beat them with the new A320neo. Boeing needed a miracle and they got that miracle with the record max order from Southwest Airlines. However, that order came with a quid pro quo and Boeing agreed to that quid pro quo and the rest is history. And this may just be the tip of the iceberg of Southwest's involvement because the information I revealed here is only a small amount that was unsealed in the other lawsuit there is surely much more evidence to come, so stay tuned. And in closing, I'm not saying Southwest should take all the blame because Boeing could have and should have said no at any time, and they didn't. 
but now you can see that there is enough blame to go around. And still it seems that nobody will ever be made to pay for the lives of 346 innocent people. Well, that's what I think. How about you? Let me know down below. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. If you'd like to help support the channel so I can keep bringing you in-depth investigations like this, the links are always in the description. And please be sure to subscribe if you think I've earned it. And don't forget to like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.